now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Amari's Revenge. The Goddess Next Door is confronted by a new being queen out for revenge at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in this inaugural Isis series adventure. Get your copy of Isis, Amari's Revenge in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Last week, I took a look at the trailer for Netflix's animated Good Times reboot, and I wasn't having a good time watching that trailer because that trailer presented all of the worst stereotypes regarding black people, and it really showed me how nothing has really changed about Hollywood outside of them finding black people to go do their dirty work, and the reason why they go get these black bootlegs to do their dirty work is because, one, they want to use these individuals to go out here and rubber stamp their narratives, and two, what they want to do is use these individuals to impede black excellence. Now, when it came to that Good Times show back in the 1970s, what happened with it is that we had Eric Monty and Mike Evans who got taken advantage of by the executives in Hollywood. And because Eric Monty and Mike Evans thought that they would be able to work with these executives on merit, they basically signed a deal with the devil that basically wound up burning black people for over 40 years. Now, Eric Monty and Mike Evans thought that they would be able to capitalize on an opportunity to create black entertainment based on the work of Melvin Van Peebles and his success with Sweet Sweet Back Song. And Sweet Sweet Back Song showed us that there was an audience for black media. However, the audience, they, what the mainstream media wanted to do in the media arm of white supremacy was create a narrative around, the, around black people that fit them into their ideas of the world. Now, with the Eric Monty and Mike Evans, they, they were ready to sign this deal, and they signed this deal not understanding that when you sign a deal with Hollywood and you sign it on their terms, what they can do with any concept you have is make that concept fit their narrative because under their wor words, they call it an adaptation. Now, they call it an adaptation because they want to adapt your material to fit their story. And this is where Eric Monty and Mike Evans got burned on the deal for good times. Now, Eric Monty and Mike Evans possibly just wanted to do a sitcom around a black family in Chicago. However, Norman Lear, being the producer, wanted to create his version of black people to fit his ideas about life in Chicago. And that's where Eric Monty and Mike Evans got burnt on the deal because once they signed on the dotted line for that contract, what happened was is that once they signed it, it became the ownership of Norman Lear's production company and CBS Studios. And with them owning the rights to the material, they could adapt that material to fit whatever story they wanted to fit. And that's where Good Times went from being a sitcom about a black family to being a sitcom filled with stereotypes because as Norman Lear and his executives got a hold of this material and had the rights to this material, they could go and make the story be whatever they wanted. So they made the story of the Evans family turned it into a story about a black family living in the Cabrini Green housing projects and made it a story about a poor struggling family because that's what those white and non-black producers wanted to see as their ideal about black people. And that's where the deal became raw for Eric Monty and Mike Evans as related to the original Good Times and over the last 40 to 50 years, things have gotten progressively worse in black entertainment because most black people, all they do is want to watch entertainment 
not understanding that entertainment is not just about making you be entertained, it's also about programming, and it's about programming a message in your mind regarding who you are. And that's where things have really gotten twisted over the last 40 to 50 years, because what's happened in that time is that now Hollywood no longer dupes people like they did Eric Monty and Michael Evans when they did the original Good Times. No, what they do these days because they saw what happened when people like Bill Cosby came about in the media looking to change and control the narrative regarding the black image is what they're doing in order to get these stories and the narratives regarding black people is going to recruit individuals to be their buffers and be the ones who would passively represent black people but aggressively be going out here and presenting the narratives that their white supremacist paymasters in Hollywood want to see as related to the image of black people. And this was started as far back as the 1980s with people like Oprah Winfrey and over time we started to see more individuals come into this space like Lee Daniels and Tyler Perry and again all these individuals were are out here they're allowed to be out here passively representing black people in black entertainment and they're allowed to be media moguls as long as they present the narratives that white supremacists want to see and allow them to see the stories that they want told about black people. And it's gotten so bad to the point that what they want to do with this trinity of Oprah Winfrey, Lee Daniels, and Tyler Perry, and basically have them be the gatekeepers to ensure that the only kinds of stories about black people are the ones that meet the standards of the white supremacist who only wants to see a certain kind of story about black people on their media platforms because they don't want to, you to see a black person out here aspiring to be excellent. No, what they want you to see is black people at the bottom of the world because seeing black people at the bottom of the world, one, makes them feel comfortable and two, programs an idea in black people's minds not to aspire to go and look to achieve competence or aspire for excellence. Now, this is something that Bill Cosby was trying to do with The Cosby Show and the shows of the golden age of television and cinema that was ushered in by Bill Cosby and film directors like Robert Townsend, the Hudlin brothers, and Spike Lee and John Singleton. They were looking to present black people in a balanced, humanized light in that golden age from the 1980s to the early 1990s and the mainstream media doesn't want you to see that because those type of images inspire black people and they aspire black people to achieve and look to do better as related to the standard of competence and the standard of excellence. Now why is the standard of competence and excellence important? Well, the standards of competence and excellence are important because when someone is competent, they have confidence. And when somebody has competence in their abilities and talents, they are not in a position where they have low self-esteem and they're not looking to seek out anybody's validation or approval. And that's what upsets the people who control the media arm of white supremacy when they see a show like The Cosby Show or a movie like House Party or a Spike Lee movie, they see black competence and they know if you are having people with black competence, they are not in a codependent relationship with white supremacy seeking its validation or approval. And as you are competent, you have confidence in yourself because you're trusting in God and yourself to be able to do things up to a standard, a standard not seeking white validation and approval, but a standard of your own. And that's what the white supremacist doesn't want you to see about yourself, because if you are competent and you have confidence 
then you're not going to be seeking out white validation or approval. No, you're going to have your own standard, and that's one of the things they don't want programmed in your mind, a whole idea of seeing black competence and seeing competent black people and seeing black people who are competent having confidence to go for what they want because they saw the impact of the Cosby show in a different world on the Gen X black community and many black people looking to aspire to go and look to go get better jobs and also people who saw a different world aspiring to go to college. So they saw that the programming there was empowering black people and they didn't want people, black people getting empowered on their media platforms because the media arm of white supremacy's job is to elevate white people in a, to be in an artificial superior position and it's designed to show white men and white women as the ultimate ideal on their platforms. That is the ultimate goal of white supremacy's media arm, and the whole idea of black people getting empowered on their platforms was something that the white supremacists didn't want to see. So this is why they look to take control of our media and the narratives of our media, and what they look to do is go find black people who will go and be the face of what of their ideals and their ideals are all about keeping us from seeing black competence and black excellence and what they want to do with those black faces is use them to hijack our media so that it fits their narrative and that's where these new bootlicks come in the first being the NWA which hijacked the rap game from black people and they also go out here and recruit other individuals to hijack our narratives and again the whole goal is to keep you from seeing black competence and see black people from looking to achieve black excellence because again when you see black competence you see black confidence and when you see black confidence you start getting the confidence to go beyond being just competent to looking to aspire to be excellent and seeing a black person look to achieve to be excellent that's something white supremacy doesn't want you to see on their media platforms because seeing an excellent black person makes many of the mediocre white people and non-black people feel uncomfortable because they know they cannot rest on their laurels in, their, in the artificial comfortable position they have been placed in by white supremacy because the white supremacist basically wants to have a smooth world where whites are an artificial place at the top and part of it is creating a media platform that programs an idea in the minds of black people that they have to remain in the mud and that's where shows like Good Times come in and the producers of those shows come in because if they are controlling the narrative of those stories, they can control the black image. And when they control the black image, what they want to do is keep black people at the bottom as related to their perception of self. And as your perception of self is seeing yourself in a ghetto, what they're doing is making it, you place yourself in a psychological ghetto so that you don't see yourself going out here and looking to achieve excellence and seeing yourself as living in a high-class neighborhood because again a ghetto is not a place about economics it is a place of a mindset because the if you do research on the history of Sugar Hill you'll know that most of the people who owned those homes in Sugar Hill were many many of them were Pullman porters and maids and those people built an entire community which had high standards and they built that community because those people had a good sense of self-worth and a good sense perception of self and that's because they weren't really heavily invested in most of this mainstream media but that neighborhood turned into a ghetto as those people got spellbound and started to look to fit themselves into black boxes that were acceptable to white people and when they saw this media telling black people that they lived in a ghetto, they basically transformed their neighborhood into a ghetto 
to make it acceptable to white people. And that shows you the power of the media arm of white supremacy on the black mind. And it shows you how people can basically turn themselves into something less than in order to fit in a white supremacist world. And the whole thing with this new Good Time show is this is all about, again, looking to program an idea in black people's minds that they are at the bottom of the world, but this time, instead of having someone like Norman Lear hijack the material of Eric Monty and Mike Evans, what they're doing this time is going out here and getting and recruiting a black bootlick to go out here and, again, passively represent that they are the producers of this material and aggressively looking to push their anti-black agenda by putting a black face in front of it. Now, with these producers, what they had was one brother who basically saw how bad this material was and wound up leaving. However, they wound up getting one of these Afro-Latinos to go out here and be the black female face of this show. And again, they did this because what they want to do is create a buffer who will go out here and be the face that represents this material but the representation of this material is designed to make it look like oh there's a black person behind this whole show and the whole idea of this black person being behind the whole show is all about showing black people that there's somebody there who is representing the false ideal of black competence and the false ideal of black excellence but this person is not representing actual foundational black American competence or actual foundational black American excellence. What they want to do with this person is have them be out here and say, oh, here's a black person who helped make this show, and they, because they made this show passively, the reason why it's bad is because it's black, but, but the whole thing is, is that they didn't get an actual foundational black American, and they weren't really looking for an actual foundational black American to represent this show because they understand that a foundational black American will go out and look at this and call it what for the racism that it is. This is one of the things that Hollywood is doing to try to stifle black excellence is that they go out here and get somebody who is a foreign born black to represent black media and they use this person to be able to prevent black competence and black excellence from being seen in entertainment. What they want to do with this individual is use this person to make it look like, oh, this is what black media looks like, but that's not what black media looks like. No, that's what the white supremacist wants you to see as black entertainment, and they want you to see this as black entertainment and believe that this is the standard for black entertainment. However, that's not what black entertainment is at all. No, we, the only time we really got to see black entertainment was in that period from the 70s to the 90s where you had Melvin Van Peebles making Sweet Sweet Back and we got to see Bill Cosby coming in and bringing in the Cosby Show and we got to see that golden age where we were telling our own stories and the way we got our own stories wasn't through the mainstream media platforms. No, the way we got our stories told was we had to go out here and create our own production companies. We had to create our own films. And people like Spike Lee and Robert Townsend basically had to finance their own films by using their credit cards. And that's always been the model for us to see images that uplift and empower ourselves is we had to go out here and make them ourselves because the mainstream media is never interested in making images and media that empowers and uplifts us. No, they always look to make images that degrade us because they make money by having us have a sense of low self-esteem and low self-worth and they make that money because, again, as long as you're seeking white validation and approval, they make money at your expense. And if they can program that idea in your mind at a young age, you will not see the value in black competence or black excellence, and you will see yourself as second best. And that's something they want to program in your mind at an early age. 
And that's why these bootlicks these days are extremely important because, again, they can passively have them represent black but aggressively promote anti-black agendas like they did in the Netflix Good Times animated reboot. And that animated reboot basically shows what happens when you have black bootlicks in front of us and in front of our narratives when you have a black bootlick in front of our narratives what that does is make it where you don't actually see black competence where you don't see black excellence and you don't get narratives that present black competence and black excellence to you that's only something you can get in new black media like i produce on the sjs direct imprint I mean, on the SJS Direct imprint, you get to see actual images of black people who are competent and confident and aspiring for excellence. That's what I write in most of my stories. I try to give people images of competent black people who are good at what they do in whatever job they have, people who have a love of self and want to share black on black love and an image of black people which shows you an image of black competence where we see black people achieving and most importantly you get to see a story where you see black people winning that's something you will not get in mainstream media because mainstream media doesn't want you to see a black person win because many of the people who are white and non-black they, a lot of them don't want to see a black person win because they fear that if a black person wins, they won't be able to maintain their place in the world, one. And two, it makes a lot of them afraid because they actually have to deal with a world with real competition. So they don't want to see a black person getting inspired to say that they can win. And that's something that I put in many of my stories, seeing a black person win because I remember growing up and reading this so-called black literary canon, and as I got older, I started to say, why is it that every time you have a story published in a mainstream media platform, the black person always loses? And the reason why you see so many black people losing is because in that mainstream literary canon, what they wanna do is program an idea in your mind that black people lose, and they do that because they want you to be imbibing white supremacy from an early age in these public schools and that's why it's important to give your kids new black media like the isis and the steam series and books like spellbound because that's going to teach your kids that they can win and they can achieve and accomplish things in this world and that's not something you're going to get in mainstream media because what they want to do is always show you a black person losing because that makes many of the racists feel comfortable and seeing black people lose is something that they love putting in their media whether it be the novels of richard wright or many of these black movies that they have today like monsters ball and precious and many of these other films they love to show you black people losing and that's what makes this media toxic and that's why you need to pick up new black media like that on the SJS Direct imprint written by a foundational black American man because media made by foundational black Americans, new black media, is all about getting you to see the best about yourself so that you don't get mired in the place at the bottom that white supremacy wants to put you in and then have you looking up at this buffer black person who isn't even a foundational black American in a lot of cases and have you looking up at someone who is that they have you looking to aspire to be like but that bootlick doesn't want you to be anything because they want to keep their place at the top and again it's all about stifling black ec competence and black excellence because black competence and black excellence is what they don't want to see on these media platforms. Yes, they want you to have a good time and laugh at people who laugh at you, but they don't want you to aspire to be excellent, and they don't want you to aspire to be excellent, and that's why they don't put competent images of black people in their media. They don't want you to see black people being competent, and they use the black bootlick to go do this dirty work 
because a foundational black American will not do this and they won't do this because they know that they've seen guys like Eric Monty and Mike Evans get burnt when they made the deal with the devil and they know that if you make that deal with the devil what will happen is once you sign away the rights to your material they can take your material and do whatever they want with it and they can take your black characters and turn them into black stereotypes that's why we need new black media and new black media platforms because new black media and new black media platforms are the ones where we get to see us as we really are and tell our stories in their purest form and we don't get to see our stories twisted and turned into racist stereotypes that's how what we need to do these days is again focus on supporting new black media like i produce on the sjs direct imprint because the only way to take power over our image is to start telling our own stories and create our own narratives that's the only way we can tell those stories and tell stories that inspire and uplift us now if you want to pick up some of the stories on the sjs direct imprint like the books in the Isis series, the Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, and my novels like Spellbound, The Legendary Mad Matilda, and many others like Eternal Night. You can find all those books that give you a richer and more diverse picture of black life on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find those stories at other online booksellers in digital format like Draft the Digital, Google Play, and the iBookstore. And you can also find them in paperback at Barnes & Noble by ordering them online. And you can also find them at big box retailers like Walmart and Target. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Illuminati, a man who rules the world, takes on the head of the global elite in this all-new action-packed John Haynes series adventure. Get your copy of John Haynes' Illuminati in paperback and e-readers at Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Coming to paperback and e-readers, Isis Dark Incubus. The goddess next door gets enthralled in a romantic entanglement with an evil incubus in this all-new Isis series adventure. Pre-order your copy of Isis Dark Incubus at Amazon.com and other online booksellers everywhere. Coming to paperback and e-readers, a steam horror in the Hamptons. The aspiring angel tries to escape a house of horrors in this all-new Esteem series adventure. Pre-order your copy of Esteem Horror in the Hamptons in digital format at Amazon.com, Google Play, Draft a Digital, and other digital booksellers, or pick up your paperback copy on May 24th. Support Black-owned and Black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.